what is going on the internet hello we have quite a brady bunch here on screen uh my name is josh i'm your host for this wonderful let's listen and uh and we're very honored to have frank lepacki and the tiberian sons and also nate horsefall say hi everybody hello hey. Hey. right on <laughs> Salut uh, <tout> le monde. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um yeah so we're all here because uh because you guys put out an incredible album uh how long has it been out now actually uh when was since it august since august all right yeah. <laughs> so two so months this, jesus this party has been uh, a while coming i guess yeah mm -hmm. definitely um <laughs> Right on. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I've had the pleasure of having the Tiberian Sons on the show before. Uh, Frank, very glad to have you here, of course, uh, everybody. If you are, like, out of the loop for some dumb reason, uh, Frank is uh, famous for composing, of course, the Command & Conquer soundtrack. Excellent composer, excellent musician all around. Uh, got to see them all perform live in 2019 at MAGFest. That was an incredible show. He's um, very visible on the uh, on the videos. I always have to point it out. as wearing the big pink wig, and he's a very tall dude. So <laughs> take up right in front row. <laughs> well, that's where I had to be for that show. That was incredible. Um, yeah, and, we signed uh, his chest. Oh yeah, I was just I was say ready it. to just move on. Honestly, I was like I'm so ready to just like you know develop other aspects of our relationship but uh, let's, let's, I, let's interview josh about his experience at our show that's that's what we'll make the show about how many people did you have to push out of the way to get to that spot in the show josh? oh yeah no I, I don't have to push anybody actually they see me coming in they're just like oh, oh crap uh, <laughs> uh, uh, oh gosh um but the reason that we're all here today of course is uh, is because of uh lay to waste uh the new collaboration collaborative EP by Frank and the Tiberian Sons, uh, and with art done by Nate Horsfall, of course. Why don't we start there? Why don't we take a look? Because this is indeed the first look of, uh, of what you see when you go to grab this album. Um, this is uh, some incredible artwork, Nate. And of course, I know this is like your classic painting style. What was it like to put together this, um, this beautiful piece? Um, so it's, it's not, it's, it's a little bit of classic painting style, but it's actually a lot more of, um, stitching together, uh, photos, um, and real, and real, uh, real images all over the internet. So I would just, I knew that for the complexity of what we wanted to do for this thing, that it wasn't going to be realistic for me to just make paint it all from scratch. So I just went around online, got as many different, basically what you would call this kit bashing as many different like photograph references and stuff and just put it all into a giant photoshop file and just started rebuilding it until i had something and then i drew over the top of it um the uh the weird black stuff around it though is different that's more of like a watercolor kind of look um and that was i don't really know why i went with that specifically i just felt like it needed something sort of classy in the middle of all of that it's hard to even really describe why it just i felt like just the usual you know uh, aggression even though that's what the album is just felt a little bit i don't know like yeah. cheesy or something like that it's well you know what it reminds me of is uh is gunpowder you know mm -hmm. like that looks mm -hmm. like like a blast or something for sure some scorched yeah. earth or something like that it definitely captures the the aggression that you're going for yeah, um, something like that I gotta say, you captured a real nice likeness of, of Frank there. And Frank, I gotta say, uh, you know, they say that you are what you eat, and maybe you've just been biting a few too many symbols. That is probably true. Um, yeah, my dental bill is a little higher than most people. So, um, but um, actually, no. What's funny is, um, you know, when we were talking about talking to Nate about, you know, what the art should be, you know, he was, you know, trying to come up with some ideas, and eventually, he ended up asking me for just a, a straight side profile photo uh, of just, you know, from my, you know, shoulders up. And so I sent him an image, and he basically took that image as sort of the reference for the interpretation that he did of it after the fact. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, that is so badass. I love it. Yeah, I just literally put it together on top of it. Um, I could, uh, I could pull up the Photoshop file later. If you guys, if you guys want to see that, uh, I did that on, there was another stream, Frank stream. I did that. I opened up the Photoshop file and showed everybody like how it's all built. People were pretty, 
pretty freaking out about about that. So yeah. I have all the files. I can I can show all sorts of different stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Whatever show you us your do. layers sometime there, man. Yeah, definitely. Oh man. Um, well, uh, that is the first look. Why don't we get into the first listen? of uh of this album um and this one actually well we will be looking because you guys also put together a video which we'll be featuring um, right yeah who, uh, frank do you want to intro this track for us yeah um so we're, we're talking about uh gun metal which is the video that we did uh first uh quote unquote single off of it <laughs> um and uh yeah this was um you know this is a track that i think we all felt was probably one of the most uh accessible i think and for that reason it was also licensed for the game soundfall and uh you know stuff like that so uh so yeah we thought it would be a good track to lead with um and uh yeah there you go right on well without any further ado this is gunmetal enjoy <laughs>
And, and we're back. Um, right out of the gate, I got to ask, uh, is that a sample of a gunshot or is Travis just like hitting the snare that hard? <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> yes and yes, yeah. <laughs> You just 127, you know, <laughs> yeah, 127 yeah. your arm. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I, I remember Tony asking, I think to Frank, like, hey, Frank, uh, I'm putting together the intro of this track. Do you happen to have any samples of gunshots? I'm like, uh, <laughs> hell yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. I, I had a limited amount. I only had like about 3,007. Yeah, like yeah. I think Connor fun. might have given me a couple, maybe. Um, it, it was a while ago, but uh, yeah, no, it, it was it was it was just a just a wacky idea that I had, where I was like, well, because I think at that point I had already arranged Laid a Waste, and then I started on this one. I was like, well, Laid a Waste could be a good intro track, but this might be a good intro track. But like thinking of like, well, maybe we should have something that just like really just like forces its way in, like as soon as you hit play. Um, and then because uh, even the working title was gun metal, I was just like, well, what if I put some gunshots at the beginning of this? And so that's, that's and then that, it just like made it the intro track for the, for the EP. Yeah, right on. Well, I mean, it's a really strong start. And I think, uh, I think the, the gun metal, like that really makes that song stand out easily. Uh, and, uh, and the time change too, like, like was it halfway through the song? <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, yeah. Really good technical prowess all around. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. yeah, that's something. That's something I've I've been known to do in the past. Once in a while, is uh, you know do a bit of uh, you know feel change you know in the song, but keep it in the same tempo technically. So it's uh, sort of a plays tricks on the mind when you listen to it. But you know, uh, nonetheless, it it breaks it up, keeps it interesting, and puts you in another place for a little bit. Yeah, play tricks on our game that that was in. Didn't yeah, <laughs> Trick, it tricked, tricked an AI, you guys. Yes, <laughs> it was. right because that one was in uh, that was in um, sound yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. that was amazing. Uh, Nate showing me that game. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I made you play that song specifically, Josh. I think you did. You're like, okay, you've played level one. And... You played like five minutes of the game. Go play this level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, it was uh, it was intimidating for sure. Uh, it got me in the got me into battle mode. That's uh, yeah. Oh my god. Um, yeah. Well, let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about the album then. Now that we've like had our first taste, um, what? To, I mean, Frank, maybe we'll start with you. What was like the inspiration for putting this EP together? Um, really, the inspiration was um, just sort of uh, the general idea that I felt like. Um, we should collaborate on something original together after having already performed together and also recorded the Command and Conquer remasters because uh, that was an official release that EA did. So uh, we had something under this moniker, under this entity of, you know, Frank Lepaki and the Tiberian Sons, even though we both do separate things, you know, apart. So I thought it would be fun to have an original, you know, album or EP out that, you know, it capitalizes on being able to use that again and have something that's our own that's out there as well. So people can discover, you know, uh, not only that based on the remasters, but also our individual respective uh, projects as well. Right on. Um, yeah. And then like what, uh, what kind of like musical influences did you bring into like the composition of the tracks? You guys can uh, all answer this too if you want. I don't know what the what the Metallica. collaborative process. A lot of Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I'll, I'll just b briefly start, and then the rest of the guys can comment. But um, I I submitted some very bare bones demos, basically, uh, with the intent. It was intentional in the fact that I wanted you know the rest of the band to add what they do to it. You know, like take this, do whatever you want. Like no limitations. I wasn't like hard nosed on arrangements or sounds or riffs or anything. I just said, look, here's something I just came up with. It's rough, but you know, do what you want. Subtract, add, fix, revise, whatever. So, um, you know, it was just ma mainly a lot of guitar riffs and drums and, uh, and yeah, I'm heavily influenced by, you know, bands like Metallica and Anthrax when it comes to heavy metal, uh, industrial stuff. You know, I'm very into like nine inch nails or Ramstein or, you know, stuff like that. Um, but there was no prerequisite for anything. It was just, here you guys go, do do your thing. And I'll let someone else take over from here. Right on. 
Yeah. So, um, like Frank, uh, Frank sent over the riffs. I think it was like July, 2020, right. It was like just after the game release. Um, I think it was like, you know, pandemic was in full swing and like the, the, like think at the, at that point, everybody was like, all right, everything's shut down. It's going to be shut down for a while. Like everybody finally coming to terms with that and everybody being like, all right, well, let's do some things, right. Let's do some things artistically. Um, so yeah, so so Frank sent those demos over, and yeah. I don't think we even got started on it uh, for a few months because the um, I think the challenge of trying to come up with something that where that's like okay, so Frank has his established material, and uh, Tiberian Sons, like we're an entity that you know has has been has existed before we collaborated with frank we're very much inspired by frank and very much inspired by like you know command and conquer imagery and stuff like that um but like you know our 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 covers kind of have a particular aesthetic to them and what we did with frank on the game uh on, on the command and conquer game has its own particular vibe so like the the challenge was like trying to um, arrange these songs in such a way to where that it satisfied all of those, um, you know, all of those aesthetics. Um, but one of the other challenges was that, you know, like we're known, the Tyrian Sons are known for putting like orchestra and everything. So some of the, um, some of the riffs, some of the riffs that, you know, that, that the Frank writes are very, you know, like, like Metallica, very heavy, like drop D blue scale sort of thing. And it, can be uh, kind of difficult to write orchestra over certain types of metal riffs. It, it can sound, it's like really easy for orchestra to sound like really forced um, over certainly like particular metal riffs. I, I don't know how to explain it, but I just, I, I felt like um, if we just threw orchestra on everything, like we always do, uh, it could come off as like, like sounding a little like disingenuous or, forced i just like that's that's the word that always comes to mind yeah. so the next thought was like okay well orchestra can kind of maybe fit on some of these but for the other ones um we still want like a really big sound right like still want to fill a lot of space big mix you know like if it's not going to be orchestras then well you know like frank's really into the industrial stuff so we'll make it kind of industrial where we're going to add more uh synthesizers and heavy percussion and uh and loops and shit like that and you know try to also try to make it maybe sound a little bit more modern we're all big fans of of, of mick gordon he's apparently a fan of us um so you know kind of like trying to make it like all right well you know like we're gonna maybe make it sound like a little bit more modern of a modern game soundtrack and so um the uh you know the the first song as, that was arranged like i mentioned earlier was actually laid away and then it was this one um and then um so like doing laid away laid to waste first kind of established the aesthetic for for the ep kind of established what instruments you we were going to use there's basically on every song like a synthesizer doubling all the guitars so it just fills in a lot of space um and then after these were established then uh travis and connor we're tasked with starting the uh, the Skywar arrangement, which is next. So maybe these guys should talk about that. Yeah, yeah, that was a a challenge, I would say, because uh, like Frank said, he basically delivered like almost like complete songs, at least like a skeleton of a song, and you know the riffs were so strong that I mean you can almost imagine taking it in so many different directions. And it's funny, um, you know, Tony was saying we tried to avoid the orchestra for so long and, um, you know, we could all talk about Sky War. That song got kind of got passed around. Like, <laughs> we're like, I don't know. Well, you do something to it. And like, well, no, you take it. You do something. And we all kind of put, you know, that one together, super collaborative. And in the end, I think the final thing that got added was uh, Frank had it. He said, you know what? I think an orchestra would go on top orchestra. of this really well. Yep. So it just, you know, <laughs> it, it worked though. So, you know, yeah. I think it was important. Like Tony said, we established the, the sound palette of the EP to be like more of a, like, you know, combination of Frank sound and our sound. Um, and then we could, 
uh, go from there. But yeah, that was uh, definitely a challenge to to find that balance. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the things you said is one of my favorite parts about this whole, you know, EP was that this really was, you know, a shared process. And I think Skywar was probably one of the the most passed around tracks between all of us. Um, and it was really cool to see that, you know, Frank had, you know, this skeleton idea and he sent it to us and and that went to Tony and and he looked at the arrangement and that went to Connor. And then Connor and I went back and forth a lot with synth arrangements and again, like talking ourselves out of adding too much orchestra initially, you know, and it was, it was really cool to see how that, you know, really made its way around the group to, to come to what it is, you know, now on the, the final release, which is a, a really neat part of a musical project that I haven't necessarily been a part of that something that's like this collaborative, it really makes its way all around and everybody's got a piece of it. And it's really, really cool how it, it comes to be on the, the final product for sure. Dang. Well, you really sold it. Um, should we just listen to that? <laughs> I guess so. Hell yeah. Well, the well, so. orchestra, we didn't want to put in it initially. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it. it's a seasoning, right? You just put it in as a flavor. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, who? Let's see. Max, why don't uh, you? You haven't gotten the proper chance to speak. Do you want to intro this track? <laughs> Hell yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, <laughs> Skywar is probably the one that sounds the least like the others in this album. Uh, what you gotta have in mind is um, so picture an alternate timeline in which uh, Crimson Skies as a game series was never cancelled and lost in licensing IP hell and it's still thriving. So imagine diesel punk 1930s high adventure pulp things with uh, evil Nazis sorry, Die Spinne that's the other evil German guys from the 1930s with the red, white, and black color scheme. <laughs> Completely different. So you're here in your weird, uh, your weird plane that's got uh, at least two or three sets of wings. And of course, the propeller is uh, at the back of the plane because it's cooler that way. And while you're shooting up evil dish pinner guys over the Chicago skyline uh, and trying to stop them from destroying your airship, imagine that you've got both Power Slave and To Tame a Land playing. That's what Skywar feels like. Okay, here's Skywar. <laughs>
Microsoft Teams. Am I right, guys? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit of the backstage conversation bleeding in. Um, no, I, I, I think I agree that you used Symphony as a good flavor to add to that song, uh, especially near the end there, just to really expand on what you guys were doing. That was a good touch. Um, so good call there. Uh, who who does the uh, the orchestra programming here? Uh, or is that all, of all of us can do yeah. it. All of us can yeah. do it. Um, I think on like I did I did the or orchestration on Laid to Waste and, and most of the other Tiberian Sons covers. Connor does orchestration. Uh, on this particular one, um, it was like Frank. Like um, basically, I, I think the order was Connor Travis started it off. There's some orchestra in the beginning, like in the in the intro. That's all those guys. Um, and then we had the song and then like they passed it to me and I put on some like more synthesizers and guitar layers. And I was like, oh, well, there's some more layers, but there's still something missing. And Frank's just like, I got this and added like a bunch of orchestra stuff to it. And it was just like, well, yep, that's that's exactly there what we needed. Yep. Uh, you know, then sent it back to me and I filled in some orchestration hole, holes like the the bumblebee guitar real fast string thing was was something something I did. But I, I think the. The most, especially the brass and the choir stuff is, is, all, is all Frank. Wow. Yeah, it just felt like it really could use that. Um, you know, when, once I heard the direction it was going, like for the first time, you know, when the guy sent it my way to kind of listen to it and, and figure out, you know, what what extra polish needs, you know, on top of that, it just occurred to me that, you know, because they had already kind of established an intro with an orchestra feel in a cinematic feel, uh, I liked that. And then when it gets into the punchy, you know, actual riffs and 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 the meat of the song, you know, the cool guitar work and, and different melodies and things that they were introducing throughout were making some of those parts become more prominent pieces of music in my first listen. And I was like, oh, well, this could be even more epic if it had this. And then I just started getting ideas for, you know, different orchestration to put on top of it. So it's kind of ironic that, you know, in the beginning they were trying to avoid that and yet this is what it needed. <laughs> so. yeah. It was inescapable. I'm just picturing you guys being like followed everywhere by this giant orchestra. <laughs> you can't shake it. <laughs> oh man. What was the, uh, what was the timeline like for you guys putting this, uh, putting this all together? Like, um, I know you guys said you started around like 20, oh, man. 20 yeah. July or something, but uh, okay. it took a while. I think it was, it was like just majority of it happened about a year, I think. That's what I was thinking. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like we've actually had this done pretty much for a year. Like it was done before I left on tour last year. Um, and I, we, de we definitely did like a lot of like the, the final recordings were the like last, last September and October. Um, I mean, but like the first couple of arrangements had happened probably like at the end of 2020. And then it was just like, whenever I had like, you know, like a little extra time between some other projects, I would sit down like with, um, uh, Tempest, the next one. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and yeah, so yeah. Yeah. It was, um, it was kind of a uh, interesting thing because it got the time we bumped up our timeline a little bit more than we were anticipating because of the whole opportunity to, to do the soundfall thing. So we were trying to finish the music just, submit it in its final like mix form at least to see you know which songs would be of interest to the game and then once we got that once tony got back from his tour then we had to master the the sessions so that we had final masters to use in the game for final once the songs were picked and then we said okay well now let's just put the album out and then it was a lot it was hinging on getting you know Soundfall needed to come out, and then Nate could get freed up to do our art for us. <laughs> that was kind of the, yeah. the last thing we were waiting on. Yep. <laughs> wow. How was uh, how was it recording for all of you guys? I'm assuming everybody just kind of did their own thing in their own homes. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. one of my like absolute favorite things about this band in particular is that you know we're spread out you know, internationally, you know, which is really cool. And, um, you know, like the first time we ever performed live, you know, was really kind of the first time we ever really like played together, you know, aside from, 
in a hotel room on, you know, sugar packets, you know, um, and that's what <laughs> I, I love about that. this. I and, that <laughs> makeshift snare drum. Um, yeah. <laughs> And uh, that's what I love about this group. And and I think it's just a testament to like technology and, you know, how crazy things are now that, you know, we can be so far apart and be able to record remotely and send things back and forth to each other and really come out with a great final product. Um, so I, I love that about, you know, this, yeah. this group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to give special shout outs to uh, <clears throat> Stemage and Metroid Metal. One, because they're awesome to begin with. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Two, because uh, in a way, they're the guys that showed the entire VGM scene that uh, being a band that only ever meets uh, for shows was, well, that it was possible to do this in our scene because they too are spread all across the, the US. And once they made us realize that Holy shit! This is actually possible. That's that's what made bands like ours possible. Mm -hmm. So, listen Absolutely. to Metroid Metal. They're yeah. awesome. That's true. Yeah. You know, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll piggyback on that comment a little bit too, which is, um, you know, that that's really the the step of of professionalism, you know, for for musicianship and for groups to be able to function on that level. Um, I'm I'm used to that as a normal way of life in Las Vegas. Like the musician scene here, just like nobody rehearses, you just show up ready to play, like in any show, in any configuration, in any genre, like that's what's expected of you here. So the fact that, you know, I could reach out to these guys and say, look, I'm going to put together this show, you know, will you guys you know, perform with me. And we could literally just, you know, achieve everything we needed to by passing tracks back and forth and finalizing, you know, how that's going to be laid out. I mean, a lot of that was, you know, pre-planned by myself initially for the show. But the fact that these guys just all, you know, knew their parts, they were ready to go as soon as we showed up to, to MAGFest for the very first time as a group playing together. And we could have, you know, pulled the show off live then and there if we really had to. So uh, that, that <laughs> Live in the rehearsal space, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, I was just, I was very uh, impressed with that and, and uh, you know, just you know my hats off to everybody here for for that for you know to rising to that occasion and and being on par with with anything i've ever you know expected from any other situation i've been in so yes bravo pats on the back for all of you um well hey, i'm still thanks for trusting us oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, i'm still waiting uh for the uh imminent um live like remote live performance uh max i know you were working on some uh some pretty we've, insane tech for that you've so. talked about it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just haven't had any time to work on this between my between my changes in day jobs uh and uh, my three kids it's it's been hard to work on this but i i still have it stuck to the at the back of my head uh to, to be honest, I would very much prefer now that the, well, now that the pandemic is kind of ending, yeah. uh, I would very much rather, you know, play actual live shows. Yes. Also, yeah, other reasons I stopped working on that was like, it, it's sort of, you know, we, we were feeling that maybe we were going to get be able to play other live shows. Like, you know, last, last January, we were getting ready to finally play our... New sets of live show, of live shows which had been delayed for two years in a row. You know, we we had two venues planned: Moscow and Saint Petersburg. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. that's uh, yeah. that's a thing that's not happening now. <laughs> yeah, for obvious so, reasons. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I want to you know yeah. try to branch out and and get other bookings too. You know, I mean, we've been trying to ping like other game conventions and stuff to just you know see what kind of interest might be out there too so you know now that things are starting to pick up more you know we're hoping there'll be more opportunity yeah. in the future now so we'll see what happens yeah yeah definitely well if just, uh yeah. if you just don't try to book taiwan them. or something <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> try to get something in the united states <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah canada's friendly just saying yeah, yeah. Hey, canada would be great yeah 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 Go visit Max in his hometown. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're oh. welcome anytime, guys. <laughs> Any and all of you. <laughs> uh, well, um, should we move on to our next track there? Um, 
who wants to follow up after Max's intense introduction? He just has to be Max. <laughs> he just has He's to be Max. Stuck for the rest of the show. Max on Max. Okay, Max. Well, how would you like to introduce Tempest? It's Tempest. <laughs> yeah, I think that's all I. Have. Okay. Cool. Well, then here's that. <laughs> I was just to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, take it away. Wow, that one uh that one's got a lot of forward momentum, hey? Uh <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's uh there's yeah. lots of uh lots of fast notes in that song. Um who was doing all of the soloing there? Uh both Connor and I, and there there's just some funny stories around that too. Um Connor, why why, why don't you take it away? <laughs> well, like we said, these tracks got passed around a lot, so we would hear a version of it and someone would get their hands on it and we'd hear like, oh, these enhancements, right? It's kind of leveled up a bit. Now it's my turn to add something. Well, it has to be at least that good, if not better to take it to the next level, right? And that kind of like, I think it was it was on Tempest, right? It kind of got out of hand yeah. between Tony and I because one of us recorded a guitar solo and you know, shipped it off like, all right, you fill in your spot. And then whoever it was, can't remember the order, was like, oh, man, that's like so much better than what I did. So one of us, maybe it was Tony or I, you know, we re-recorded our solo, <laughs> wrote, like scrapped what we had, redid it. And that happened a couple times. And it escalated to the point where uh, we 
<laughs> wanted to do our solos in one take, no edits, like all the way through. And so I remember we were talking about like, well, I've spent, you know, I've been practicing 10 hours on this solo. It's like, oh, really? Well, I've been on 12 hours. I'm at 12 hours of practice to get my <laughs> 20 seconds of, you know, solo. So it was a lot of fun. And, you know, we, we push each other that way and it's, it's mm -hmm. friendly, but like, you know, the result obviously I think speaks for itself just because you can tell those solos are like a step above a lot of stuff we've done. So it was, it was really fun in the end. I'm glad we, you know, had that little battle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny. Like, so, um, I am not that great at like the traditional alternate picking shredding stuff. Um, so like, I've just developed like other things to do, like two hand tapping and shit like that. So I was like, well, the best thing I can do, or like the most flashy thing I can do is like all this two hand tapping stuff. So my entire solo was that. Um, <laughs> and so it's, but you know, it felt like, especially like a song like Tempest, which is like, you know, like a big windstorm, like, you know, throwing shit everywhere. Like that, that, I think that, that felt like appropriate for, it's just like, just an onslaught of notes. Um, just just in your face but yeah it's it like having having a band like this where you kind of got like a little bit of friendly competition like i think connor is a better guitar player than me but like i it, it definitely pushes me to be like um be like well crap he's definitely better at me than like all these things let me try to like develop something that i can call my own and at least be like consider myself like a competent guitar player oh, so i'm not i don't feel ashamed because like professionally i'm a bass player so nice. yeah right yeah, yeah the, um, the 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 song of this one was uh, something that you know when I when I came up with the demo of this, it actually the the final version is pretty true to the original demo in terms of like its arrangement uh, with just a few tweaks that these guys kind of added. But it was more about just you know the enhancement of the production and the way that everybody plays on this track is you know what they brought to it to make it their own and and uh, you know definitely just made it you know a thousand times better in the in the end, but. Um, I can say that about every single person here because like, even like as a drummer myself, you know, I was listening to Travis's tracks when they came back and I was just like, what in the hell, how do you even know where you are based on what you played? <laughs> you know? Because I thought of it as a completely different way having, you know, written the demo. And so I had to like adjust my thinking based on his tracks and then, uh, you know, hearing the stuff that, yeah, that Connor and uh, Tony brought to you, the solo sections and you know, uh, the different uh, things that they brought to were really, really cool and fun and just, yeah, elevated the insanity that already was brewing in the, be in the beginning of it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, there's there's uh, some really, uh, really intense drumming there, Travis. So you came up with that, like, pretty much yourself, eh? Yeah, so I think the first um, set of demo drumming tracks i think came from tony um programmed a lot of the initial ideas and kind of the initial arrangement um which i loved and i think that's a lot of you know kind of to tony's credit you know where he talks about you know being a guitar player and but you know professionally a bass player but also he's programming drums and you know all this stuff i think to tony's credit you know he crushes a lot of this stuff and i think that's a lot of how you know, the, the Tiberian sun music and arrangements, you know, come together as the ideas, you know, the core arrangements start with Tony and that's how this one came to be also. And, um, I think actually I'm kind of on, you know, the same page with Frank where, you know, a lot of these like crazy feel changes, actually, I think the original ideas, you know, I don't want to steal credit, you know, came from Tony. And so, you know, then from there, you know, I take Tony's ideas and then, you know, I dive into the drum tracks and, you know, um, you know, work out, you know, kind of my, my ideas there. Uh, but this definitely, I think of probably this and Skywar are the, the most, uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, challenging tracks, you know, I think this album as a whole is one of the most challenging drum tracks I've, you know, had to put together, but you know, those two, I think this is probably the number one is probably the most challenging tracks I've had to record ever, um, which is awesome. And I love it, <laughs> but definitely dreading the time and excited, like 50% excited, 50% <laughs> dreading, you know, when we get the yeah. chance to play this stuff live, you know, um, yeah. cause yeah, it's, it's crazy and, and I love it. Absolutely love it. The thing, yeah, the thing, the thing you've, you've got to know about Tony is that, uh, so he says, uh, yeah, I'm 
Like he's unsure whether his main skill set is as a guitar player or as a bassist. All of this is false. Tony's primary <laughs> skill, the one that is you know beyond everything else by several orders of magnitude, uh, is writing pieces of music that make uh, the musicians that have to play them hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Including myself, <laughs> yeah, himself included. Like you could, like you could put a mic in front of each and every one of us during concerts, playing things written and arranged by Tony, and you can be certain that you will hear this kind of grumbling. I hate you, Tony. I hate you. God damn it! I hate you. It hurts so bad. Coming from all of us. <laughs> oh. Yep, uh, guilty as charged. <laughs> yeah, I, that's why we love you by the way dude that's true that it's is true painful to play but man does it sound good yeah 100 percent agreed there oh well we've only got one more track uh to listen to here um yeah anybody want to take on the intro besides max <laughs> Uh, I'll I'll take on this one. Uh, so with with no flashiness, just honesty. So like the <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this this was the first song that was actually arranged, and this was the one that kind of like set the tone for the rest of the album. And this was the first one where um, I uh, like I heard it and I was like, okay, you know, like I kind of hear something a bit different than what Frank actually had. Uh, had given us a lot of what Frank had given was kind of this double time stuff. We could talk about that later, but this, you know, I, I wanted to make this kind of like a heavy crushing, just like destroy lay to waste your enemies. Um, and this is, this is the result. This is the result. This is lay to waste. Enjoy.
Well, you certainly did a good job naming the songs. I know that's not like the most glorious thing, but like like laying to waste, like yeah, like that. Well, Frank's song names. flattened. Everything. Naming is the hardest part. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, it can be. It can be. No, but um, yeah, that's actually what the demos were named when I submit. Well, all but one, one, one right. chain later yeah. but uh but yeah there was um lay to waste uh was a, a song i had in the in a demo version for a while and it went through a few versions actually because i actually had originally intended to write vocals to it and um the main guitar harmony that you hear in that song was actually supposed to be a vocal hook but i changed my mind about it after i heard you know what it would sound like as a guitar harmony i was like i like this better it just punches better i like you know so let's just keep it instrumental and then that was really the only main thing that kind of stuck with this arrangement um you know the, the guys kind of in tony uh, specifically definitely uh, changed it up uh you know enough to their you know way of playing things and 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 uh, tweaking the arrangement and whatnot um and gave it a, a different a bit of a different feel from the from the demo but that was the one thing that i said you know this is a, a part that i think is strong as a hook and then we can you know build on the rest of the track based on that yeah, so this one, I think this was definitely admittedly like the most me like trying to be like, ah, I'm going to do some Mick Gordon shit here. So like, I, you know, I'm trying to, <laughs> um, I mean, a lot, a lot of like modern metal now is like kind of like halftime groove stuff. So um, like, I, I think Frank's demo was like, was like really like double time thrash, like like that, that sort of feel, I think was most of this song when Frank sent the demo, which I love, which I love um but doesn't feel super modern like it feels like you know like 80s 90s sort of sort of thing and i was like well you know the, i i i wanted to I, I did like a bunch of experiments with the riffs and like different feels and everything i was like oh, this feels really good if you kind of just like drop it back uh just make a really stomping hardcore uh like groovy riff you know kind of kind of feels metal. like uh kind of you know like like yeah yeah and it feels like uh some of the the heavier um tracks like frank did and like like red alert 2 or like his tracks from like red alert 3 where they're just like they're just powerful and uh and just crushing and stomping but not necessarily fast right but still powerful right so um you know still kept in like some of those double time feels just 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 to just to change it up just for uh, for a couple riffs but this was definitely one like out of the four was changed up the most from from the other from from that from the demo versions right and you said it was the first track that you guys started working on i love uh, i don't know i i just always love it when like you know how you want to end the album and then you kind of like work backwards from there <laughs> it's almost right. really yeah it's like, like see what you're reaching towards right yeah like so it was either i think when we, like it was either like well later ways could be a good intro or it could, or, but it could also be a really great outro. And then when we had gunmetal, it was like, well, that could be a really great intro. I don't know if it could be a great outro. And I don't know if the other ones fit as outros either. Um, so I think that was just the, the logic there. It was like, Later Waste is a really good outro. So it's going to be right there and the rest, you know, fit in place. Yeah, gunmetal's got a strong, you know, uh, just right off the bat, just brings you in, you know? Yeah. Whereas, like, uh, uh, even though, uh, you could think a song like sky war might make for a good intro too for the cinematic sense of it to build into something but you know you're not sure what you're listening to at first so you're kind of you know having to like acclimate to it and then just get beat over the head all of a sudden <laughs> so yeah right. you know, and then and then tempest of course is just crazy right off the get-go so it might be a little too intense for a starting point you know in, in that case so yeah i think the order was was the right choice for sure yeah, definitely. I always love album flow, EP flow, the the like making a long form uh, piece of art, you know. And yeah, you guys, uh, even though it's just four tracks, you guys nailed it. Good job. Oh. Here's one thing uh, I wanted to just point point out, uh, throwing out something to Nate real quick. So <laughs> Nate, so you were you were uh, um, kind of privy to you know our behind the scenes along the way when we started this. I was just we never really got your take on you know from the beginning, you know, what you were seeing happen, like your perception of that. So um, initially I wasn't necessarily like listening to the tracks back and forth, but I just thought that the idea of it was just so awesome. You know, I uh, 
the, uh, the idea that Frank would come in and be like, here's this idea, here's this rough sketch essentially. And then like, let the band do things was just so cool. Um, I love seeing that kind of thing come together. There's been a number of different people that I've known over the years that have wanted to do ideas like this, but have never actually done it. Um, I could name names, but I want to let them keep their secrets. Uh, but I, I, I don't know how many, how many other groups exist that have done this sort of thing before where like basically somebody else just makes a sketch and then the rest of the band kind of piles on it and you're kind of sharing things back and forth. Um, I did that with the albums that I directed way back in the day when I was doing like Spectrum Mana artwork, I would literally be like, all right, I'm going to start this sketch. I'm going to give it to my brother. Maybe this other person jumps in, whatever. And it was just a, such a really cool collaborative process because you just don't know, you know, what you're going to get back. You know, I'm sure Frank, it was probably just super exciting to just be like, what's it going to be this time? You know, you'll open the, oh, didn't it, didn't see that coming. And then like, I remember you were telling me that that would re-inspire you to do something else. So that's just yeah. that whole, that, that whole process where you can basically just trust the people that you're working with, like 100% is, is so incredibly good. That's generally when game development goes good. That's what I like about the good part of game development is that when you're working with people who, you know, will crush it, you're just like, all right, this person just made a concept and by the time that gets to my hands it's going to be amazing and then like then when you play it in the game it's like oh i didn't expect that they would do this and you're like, oh well, let's go do that it's just it's awesome yeah i was actually looking forward to being surprised as well like you know because i had no idea what the first thing would sound like you know once once these guys got their hands on it and you know what tony was going to start kicking around you know being the producer essentially of the that's something that's unique that i haven't done before where i haven't actually like handed my stuff off to someone else to produce necessarily you know so uh that was but uh, to nate's point that was something i was very trusting about because you know having you know had some history now together working with these guys you know in that context i had an idea of the kind of at least you know workflow and what to expect in that way not necessarily what something would sound like on an original thing so that was exciting to me to explore that yeah definitely i'm really happy to to hear more of your compositions i mean um well i mean like <laughs> there i go and say like putting my foot in my mouth like yeah like last time i saw you guys live it was all your compositions anyways but you know like like outside of uh outside of a game soundtrack you know like to to hear more of that like original flavor um uh without like the the context necessarily is uh, is really refreshing so that's really nice um i think we had uh something that travis wanted to to talk about as well yeah so um the uh, both Laid Waste and Skywar um, were our introduction into the VR uh, gaming world also. So both of these tracks uh, got licensed out um, to uh, the brand new, just released, um, I think on, let's see, September 20th. Um, so just a, a couple of weeks ago for God of Rifts, which is kind of like the heavy metal beat saber um virtual reality game that just just came out um so we're super excited to uh to see that and one of my favorite things about um my my communication with uh so it's released by boss music games um and published by virusoft and one of my favorite things about um communicating with virusoft is anytime they talked about lay to waste they always refer to it as lay to waste expert and it, it was in parentheses as like expert <laughs> mode. And so, <laughs> so I, and I, I talked a lot with, you know, their, um, audio guys and, um, I sent some, uh, charts back and forth. I think, especially with sky war is, you know, one of the, the weirder, you know, kind of not necessarily like field change or metric modulations, but it's got a lot of like interesting field change, like with, uh, some time signature adjustments. And, uh, so I had to send some, uh, charts back and forth. And we talked a lot about that track in particular, but it was funny to hear that like lay to waste was always their expert mode. Um, and it was always referred to that, like lay to waste expert. It was yeah. every single, <laughs> always in our <laughs> yeah emails. Uh, but yeah, so God of Rifts, um, yeah. VR game just came out, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, badass, like heavy metal beat saber game. Um, yeah. Out by uh, boss music game. So yeah, check it out. Play some. Yeah. 
more Tiberian Suns with yes. that and Soundfall. Right. <laughs> right. I think I'm going to plug this album into Audio Surf. Is anybody here familiar with Audio Surf? Yeah. 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 So I'm picturing this whole album just being like a downhill run, you know? <laughs> I can't tell you how many videos fans have sent to me of them putting Command and Conquer music to Audio Surf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Hell March. Doom, doom, doom. Yeah. Just yeah. bobbing around. Yeah. Oh my all, God. Of, all of those tracks. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I think it's safe to say, uh, though, you know, we're, we're very proud of this uh, EP that we've put out, and it was a great first um you know collaborative effort that you know felt very seamless uh we worked very well together um i think it's safe to say that you know the door is open for sure for for more to come so uh we'll see where oh, yeah. the future takes us next right well Frank i guess the back here the tiberian sun will return <laughs> <laughs> Frank, this sorry, this is going to be the longest title ever. Frank Klepacki and the Tiberian Sons to Electric Boogaloo. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I usually like to ask uh, people on Let's Listen, like what's what's coming down the pipeline? Is there anything more uh, that you guys have that you're working on that you feel prepared to share or little sneak peeks? Well, I mean, we are working a lot, but obviously oh, yeah. the, um, I mean, we are, we are working on some, some game stuff. I don't know if we can really talk about that right now. Uh, but the obvious thing is that the next Tiberian Suns release is actually very soon. Uh, it is on Friday and it is our, actually probably our first single game remix album. Right, because all, all of our, pretty much all of our, all of our other albums have been like collections of different games, uh, but on Friday we are releasing Satan's Office Supplies, which is a collection of um, of uh, mini mini boss themes from Paper Mario Origami King. Uh, is one of my favorite soundtracks ever, and it blew me away as as, as soon as I heard it, and it just like it was so good. I just felt compelled that's just like the, these songs sound like they were written for the Tiberian Sun. so i was yeah. gonna do let's let's do a whole album of it so <laughs> coming out this friday at least on Bandcamp. hopefully we'll try to get it up on uh streaming uh same day or just, just soon after and then we are doing a listening party here for it yes <laughs> yeah you betcha that's on october 17th um, and we'll be publishing the details of that very soon on our social media. So if you're not following us, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. All of that jazz. Um, yeah, guys, uh, I, it, it's been a super pleasure to have you guys all on the show. Um, happy to have any of you back at any time. Of course, Siberian Sons, you guys will be back. Frank, you're welcome back anytime you have a release. And Nate, I am actually going to start developing that uh that artist spotlight, visual artist spotlight program. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leak that here on this stream for no good reason other than the fact that you are here and I want to say something to you. Um, but, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, Nate, Nate's a good one for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's good. Also, he's good uh, for saying stuff to him. <laughs> see, yeah, like I just like just open up my entire folder of all the album art for people and be like, uh, yeah, it's just like a hundred, a well, hundred or something. And, <laughs> used... and let's let's just you know, Nate. Not only you know, I mean the album artwork, and I think the this album artwork is one of my favorites. Um, but I mean, Nate's an integral part of our live show and the whole production. You know, I think. Tiberian Sons truly isn't, um, you know, what what we're able to be without Nate. So I don't, you know, Nate isn't just our album artist. You know, Nate's I always our, call him the sixth a, member of the band. Huge, absolutely, yeah, hundred hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. These, these guys delayed this album so I could finish the artwork. So I took that. Totally <laughs> worth it. Yeah, yeah. No, like, we'll wait the, for you, man. We'll wait for you. Absolute middle of soundfall hell during yeah. the middle of, and it was just not going to happen. And it was just like, all right, I just waited for it. So made it worth it. I think mm -hmm. the, I think it came together in like four days or something. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Once, once you got the idea down, it was it was quick. Yeah. The hardest part is coming up with the idea, especially yeah. these days, because I've done so many different things. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. That's fantastic. No, no shortage of stuff and i appreciate appreciate all the love you guys i think i think the worst part about working with nate is nate's like 
hey, yeah, so I've got some concepts. Here's like nine samples. And we're all like, oh, fuck, these are all amazing. Like, oh, yeah. no, like, these are all awesome. You guys, I, I had to, I had to uh, design a tattoo for a friend of mine recently. And <laughs> the way I work, this is literally everything. Like animations, video, well, not video, videos. I don't do it this way because the videos, the band hires me and I'm like, here's what I made. I hope that's good enough because it does, doesn't matter. We're done. <laughs> um, but, but usually it's like, I, I show versions and then I'll also show multiple different types of things. And so it's like, what about this? What about this? What about this? And every single time that I would send her a new version, she was just like, I, I can't pick between these versions. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make sure that you have as many ideas as you can before. So when we get to the end, it's not like, Oh, I, I could have also told you about this one, but I didn't. Kind of thing. <laughs> well, that's just a uh, proof of your hard work and dedication. Maybe you, you could work a little less hard and stop giving all of your customers AP. <laughs> no, we, we love the work that you're doing, Nate. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, one other thing I'll add too, Josh, is that um, uh, besides um, what this what we've just released now, uh, I have another solo album in the works as well. That's uh, going to be coming out hopefully uh, by end of this year. At this point, it's, I delayed it to in order to get this out <laughs> first. <laughs> so, um, but uh, it's an album that I started on my uh, Patreon page actually, uh, where I it was an ex another experiment where I basically invited my uh, members of the community there to uh, request styles of music for each song that I was going to put on it. So there's like this variety of different tracks that is basically based on what specific kinds of tracks people wanted to hear me kind of revisit genre wise, or even expand on stuff that I haven't done where actually uh, Nate was one of the guys who decided to throw a bone my way and say, hey, why don't you do something that, like this? And I was like, what? How many like people here have ever heard Pistolero by Juno Reactor? Oh, it's so good. Any, ah. Okay, there you go. There you go. Nice. It's like yeah. either not known at all or persons who loves it is like, it's and so I was like, like a techno I don't, meets flamenco. Yeah, it's like song. techno flamenco. Yes. And I was just like, I don't think I've ever heard you do flamenco before, Frank. Yeah. So that was that was a first for me. So uh yeah. so I, I uh put that to work. I had a, a great uh, guitar player friend of mine who specializes in doing exactly that on guitar. Uh and he played along to this, you know, arrangement that I did and it came out really good. So um so yeah, nice. so that's coming down the pipeline. Uh you I'm know so excited to hear that. Yeah, that. Oh my yeah. god. Awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Awesome. I can't wait to hear the Frank Menko. Yes, uh, <laughs> Frank Menko. Yeah. Oh. I guess I should probably also mention uh, my day job is uh, going on tour with Trans Siberian Orchestra. So if you're on the East Coast in November and December, uh, come check us out because it's, it's a pretty cool show. It's pretty cool. Yeah, right on. Tiberian or uh, TSO is what inspired me to do the visuals. In the yes. first place so yes. it all comes full circle i saw the visuals and i was like i bet i could do this but just on one single screen and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i don't have access to pyro or lasers if i did it would be even crazier although we sort of had you did we have had, we had lasers at no the lasers. tiberian sun show thanks actually to, uh, uh the laser Christoph. guy came to one of our tso shows oh yeah time. he did yeah because i told him to go <laughs> i told him i told him if yeah. you don't go i will buy you your own ticket like you have to go because yeah. this is what inspired that whole thing to come. Awesome. Yeah. He was uh, he was easy to find in the crowd because he's got like blue hair. You yeah. like everybody like masked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, no. Yeah, Good he enjoyed stuff. it. It was it was great. Good yeah. amount. Yeah. Are you sure that wasn't Josh with another weird cosplay? <laughs> <laughs> Only for an anime girl costume. No. <laughs> Surprise! I did your lighting. No, just kidding. <laughs> ah! I made sure you would know where I was because. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> right on. Anybody mm. else uh, got anything else they want to announce before we start wrapping things up here? Just uh, to say that this EP is available on all the major platforms. So if you, you know, however you like to stream your music or or purchase it, uh, it's available. Uh, you can download it, get downloads on off of my website store or off of iTunes or off of Amazon or you know or stream it on any of your preferred uh, services. Absolutely, and there's the link in chat for the uh, for Frank's store. You should also check out some of his other albums there. He's got uh, he's got a lot of amazing work up there. So definitely be 100%. sure to check that out as well. And uh, God, if I were Art and 
had this ready, I would have the Tiberian Suns band camp as well. But there we go. That's it in chat as well. Um, yeah, and uh, definitely and looking. These, these guys are starting to bleed over into my other stuff now too. Like, like my quarantine <laughs> sessions album. I had uh, Tony play bass on one of the tracks. Did a solo, which was amazing. And then uh, on my new album that's coming out, I asked Connor to do a guitar solo for me on too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're just amalgamating into this beautiful Cronenberg. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the waves. Yeah. And on that well, note, it turns oh, out that yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Come on, no, no. If you no, go ahead, I was just about, I was just about to say it turns out that you know Frank is actually super nice to work with. So yeah, we want to do more <laughs> of this. <laughs> we will. We'll definitely do more. It'll happen. It'll happen. The fusion is beautiful, folks. Um, yeah, well, uh, that's all we're going to do for tonight. Thank you so much, uh, guys, for coming on and for everybody in chat and for everybody who will be enjoying this on YouTube in the future. Um, yeah, uh, as far as things that are happening here on Bonus Stage, we've got another listening party this coming Friday with Button Masher. Um, and, uh, and next week on October 15th, we'll be having our next music online virtual concert. So stay tuned for details on that. I'm Josh. This has been Frank Klepacki, the Tiberian Sons, and Nate Horsfall. Um, thank you all for coming out. We'll see you next time. <laughs>